Okay, so um, hi everyone. Thank you for coming to my talk. Um, this is my first academy ever, and also my first big conference talk ever. So uh, if I start fumbling or talking too fast, just raise your hand and ask me to repeat what I said. I will do that. Um, so the title of my talk is um, obviously a huge cliche, but um, I'm going to explain what it actually means in a bit. Uh, first, I will just briefly introduce myself for those of you who don't know me. So uh, my name is Ivana. I joined uh, KD Promo last year as a contractor after having used KD software for a long time. Uh, in KD Promo, I'm working on making sure KD as a brand and as a community gets the recognition that it deserves and on establishing a framework um, that will allow new contributors to easily pick up uh, the work and carry the torch once the current contributors are no longer able to uh, work on the project. Um, I also worked as a technical writer at a creation company called Reversing Labs. Um, it's a security company that develops software for malware analysis uh, and detection. Uh, we have some really cool technologies. Unfortunately, all our products are proprietary, uh, but we try to give back to the open source community as much as we can. Uh, and around 90% of our developers all use Linux on their computers, and a lot of them use Plasma, so myself included, so that's great. Uh, we are also hiring, so if you're interested in developer or, or DevOps positions, you can ask me about this uh, after the talk. Um, so yeah, release notes. Exciting, am I right? Um, I I'm sure I don't have to say this, as uh, everyone knows what release notes are, uh, but just in case, um, they are a compilation of new features, changes, uh, and resolved issues in a particular software release. In an ideal world, they would contain all this information, but in reality, they often will um, of course, this is an exaggeration and a joke, <laughs> but um, sadly, a lot of them actually look like this, and this is, you don't win friends this way. But what do we actually mean when we say win friends and influence people with release notes? Well, it means you can use release notes to get people to uh, uh, make it easier for them to promote your product, first of all, uh, make them uh, interested in your product, so your software product, right? Um, also, to leave an impression of a trustworthy product that they will be loyal to as users. So, why release notes are good for this? Well, because they're often the first user touch point um, that for your new release. So, uh, many people will tell you, oh, nobody reads release notes, but you know, everyone is still making them, <laughs> everyone is writing them still. So, um, people obviously want better ones. There are requests for better release notes in almost every project. So obviously they have a purpose, and they're a standard part of every software release package. So since they're already there, why not try to transform them into something more useful and attractive? So how do we actually do this? Well, I've collected a list of five basic suggestions. Um, of course, they are just suggestions. You can find tons of ideas for improving release notes all around the internet. Um, and which advice you'll follow depends on what your focus is. But the ones I've selected start with the following. So make sure your release notes are readable. What this means is that you need to pay attention to how they are formatted and organized. Uh, this will often depend on uh, where, your, uh, where your notes are getting published. This is usually your website of your, of your, of your project. Um, it's a good practice to include a summary uh, at the top of the release notes. Uh, this summary can be used, for example, uh, when you are publishing your software uh, in an app store or in a package manager. You can also use the summary on social media and then add a link to the full release notes. It makes it easier uh, for people to, to share it. Um, you can also order features and changes um, in order to open port. And so how important a feature is for the user. Does it affect something major in your software or is it just a minor fix? Um, accessibility also matters a lot. So um, most release notes are posted on the project website. Uh, so that should give you enough control over how they're presented. So you can make sure the contrast is right and the colors on the website uh, do not hinder readability. Uh, if you're including images in your release notes, uh, make sure they have alt text or captions. So um, how this helps us win friends? Um, it makes the release notes uh, easier to digest. 
and people will appreciate being able to skim through the information and still get the most important parts. Another thing you can do is make them reliable. Uh, reliable in the sense that people can be sure your release notes are the source of truth about your project. So your release notes should be checked for technical accuracy so that you don't write that something was changed when it actually wasn't. Um, reliable also in the sense that you can predict users' expectations and then you meet them. So they might expect extra information about your products, so you link to documentation if you have it available online. Or they might expect installation upgrade instructions, so you provide them with the release notes. Um, providing help and workarounds for known issues uh, is also a great way to establish your release notes and consequently your project as a reliable one. Uh, if you stay consistent and always keep doing this, uh, you should build a great image uh, for your project as one that cares about its users and provides support. Another thing you should always be is be clear. Um, clarity in this sense uh, means writing your release notes so that people who are not developers can understand them. Um, this may be the hardest part um, because it involves, uh, involves asking directly, you know, talking directly to developers, to other people who worked on the release and asking them what this particular change means for the user. Because um, when it comes down to that, that's all the user wants to know. What's in it for me? What does this mean for me? Uh, what was changed? How can I benefit from it? So um, if your release was focused on a particular feature or improvement, uh, it's a good idea to list that first and organize other points to support and illustrate that. Um, this also means you don't have to include everything. If there are some minor changes that don't affect users directly, you don't have to list them. Uh, you can also organize the release notes according to user expertise. So for example, these changes are important for developers or system administrators. Um, some things that writers of release notes often forget are new default values. So if some default values, configuration values change in your software, it always list that. Compatibility changes and security issues are also something that people sometimes don't include or don't give enough detail on. So um, you don't just say we just fixed some security issues. Tell people which ones, you know, what was wrong, how did you fix it. So um, I think we're doing a great job with Plasma release notes or release announcement in this regard because we provide everything written in clear, plain language and we provide also uh, screens as illustration. Another thing you can do is invite users to interact through your release notes. So if you want to influence people to do something, uh, you also have to be very direct about it. This means you have to ask them to do it um, or provide an easy way for them to do so. <coughs> so this is why our CTAs are call to action. Um, you can ask people to download your products, um, just give them a link or include direct sharing links for social media so they can share your release notes on their profiles. You can also invite people to contribute to your project or even to improve the release notes themselves. Um, if your bug reports are public, you can also link to them for every result issue so people get more context or you can invite people to report uh, new bugs in the release notes. So how this influences people, it invites them to do some action and makes them feel involved in your project. I think Fedora is doing this really well. They ask for feedback on release notes and they also divide their release notes according to user Categories, right? You have stuff for desktop users, as you can see. Um, and yeah, show gratitude. So um, this is something that works if your developers are okay with their name being published. Uh, and let's be real, who doesn't like credit for the work? So uh, it's a good idea to include names of people who worked on the project. Uh, thank the developers who made changes. Thank the people who tested the release, who made bug reports. You can also put a name to the release notes. So. All this makes your project seem more human, and people will be might uh, people might be more motivated to join as contributors if they see they will be directly credited for their for their work. So we have a good example of this in Nate. Uh, he's not here, right? I'm praising Nate, and he's not here. Oh. Uh, so yeah, he does these updates on the usability goal, and he always provides the name of the person who did the bug fix. So that's nice. But wait. There's more. So, benefits for you. So, everything previously was, um, you know, for the user. But how can you benefit as a project owner, as a developer, from better release notes? Well, um, 
you can use them to track the progress of your project. So to put things into a historical perspective, uh, if you include images in your release notes or announcements, uh, that helps you keep keep a record of how your how you improved your user interface, for example, or how your interface changed over time. Uh, if you're hosting uh, your release notes on your project's website, uh, which is how it's usually done, um, you can track user engagement, actually, so you can see how many people uh, click through the release notes, um, how long did they stay on the page, how long did they, you know, how much time they spent reading the release notes, did they open links to docs, maybe, or links to download your software, so you can, you can track all this if you want to. Um, another thing you can do, which is, um, Provide solutions for known issues on your own website. So if it's indexed by search engines, that means that search traffic gets to your own website instead of some random forum on the internet. So now I know what you may be thinking. Ain't nobody proud of that. Because if you're a one small person project, you probably don't see this as a worthwhile investment. Uh, because all this advice means that you will have to spend time actually manually writing the release notes instead of exporting them from a tracking, uh, from you know, whatever you use for tracking Jira or Fabricator. Um, so this is then your opportunity to invite contributors, to find people to help you create better release notes. Um, the fact is that users want release notes. They want to understand what's new in your project. They want to know what to expect from it. So another fact is that journalists or journalists will use your release notes as a source of information for their articles. And you don't want them to get some info wrong and present your product in the wrong light. So invite contributors. People don't need to be developers to help you. It's a great opportunity for people, for example, like me, with a background in writing or humanities. Um, you can announce that you're looking for help in your community. You can open a task for it in your work tracking software, you can announce it on social media, you can go to our own um, group or streamline the boarding of new contributors, you can ask them for advice, how do I get these new people to help me? Uh, you can also create um, guidelines for people to know how to write those release notes. So you, you have a lot of examples. Like for example, Mozilla has really nice guidelines for um, how to actually write release notes. Um, so yeah, I mean, in the end, we all want our products to succeed and we want people to like them, obviously. So even something that may seem so small and insignificant, like release notes, um, can, really, can really make a big difference in how the outside world perceives um, our products and the work we do. So that's pretty much it. Thank you for your time and attention. I hope this was at least a little bit useful to you. And now I think we have some time for questions. So, maybe any questions? Uh, so when you update, you get release notes for the application, right? That's what you were planning to do. 
I, I think it would be a good idea uh, for a single application. So, if, for example, you update Dolphin and you get release notes for just for Dolphin, but if you get it for the whole KD application set, that might be too much, yeah. Um, uh, the problem with this is that it's easy to dismiss, so, you know, user can just click close and never read it, but on the <coughs> other hand, it's more visible than posting them on a release notes, like on, on the website, right? So, um, if you actually plan to do this, I think it would be a good idea to maybe try to test it, like do an, an A-B testing if you can, uh, but yeah, um, I think it's not a bad idea if you have the resources to do it. Does that answer your question? Any other question? It's more of a suggestion or a comment for you all. Uh, if you uh, do a commit, you can write a like, change of the colon. So we all generate the change of usually from the read commits. Yeah. And then you write change of colon, like write a couple of five colon. You make the release guys like a little easier. So That's great advice, Dave. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, so you're asking if 
we considered using some automated tools for release notes? Or, uh, well, I think, uh, I'm not sure how every key project does it, but I think most of them do it that way. So they export, you know, from whatever they're using, they export a list of finished tasks, and uh, you get, you know, titles of these tasks as entries in your release notes. And the problem with that is that they're not always consistently written, so not everyone follows uh, the same guidelines, so to say, uh, for writing those titles. So you always have to do some manual editing. Of course, it would be ideal and much, much easier if everything could be automated, but then you would have to have these guidelines at the previous step. So you have to train developers, so to say, uh, to always write you know, those titles consistently, and then you wouldn't have to do so much manual editing afterwards. But um, even without it, um, we would still do some manual writing after release notes. So what we do is we take release notes as a list, and then you turn them into an announcement, which is an actual text with images similar to what I showed uh, with Plasma. So yeah, that's a release <coughs> announcement with text and context, basically. If you're speaking about release notes just as a list of things that were done, a lot of that can be automated, yeah. But I'm not sure which uh, tool we would use for that. I expect there are a lot of them and that we should test them, probably. So does that answer your question? <laughs> okay. Any more questions?